Gordon, I would say congratulations being on the top 100 HR influencer for 2020. Thank so you. can you tell us more about what tips you have for HR professionals, and especially nowadays with the COVID, is there anything particular that HR people should be doing to their employees? Yeah, I, I think, well, a, a couple of things. Again, we, we just talked about employee engagement and that the, the bigger problem, I think, is management engagement. So I would tell HR, look at the Gartner studies on management engagement mm -hmm. and make sure you're fixing the problem and not the solution. Sorry, the symptom, which is employee en engagement or disengagement. And also, as well, when we're looking at working from home, we need to make sure that um, not everybody is going to want to work from home. Some people, uh, I mean, I, I love it, even though I'm a leader, uh, I, I'm very comfortable now. Mm -hmm. If I never went into the office, it wouldn't bother me at all. But there are other people that, that either don't have the facilities at home, so we need to make sure that we are supportive of them. And if they need to go to places that we talked about before, work there, and there's a fee involved that we cover the cost of that fee. Yes. Um, don't just leave it down to the employee to cover it. And there are going to be some employees who actually want to come into the office who need that. Uh, they need that personal interact face to face yes. Yes. interaction. So I don't think there's a one size fits all solution mm -hmm. of it was all in the office. Now it's all at home. I think we've got to be uh, flexible and responsive to people's needs and uh, I've worked in a few companies where, you know, we've had issues with stress um, and, and people's mental health mm -hmm. because of how they're working. And when you're in an office environment, those things, you might not pick up 100%, but you're going to get some clues about it. When people are now working from home, you're not going to get a lot of those visual clues to people's you know, emotional and mental well-being. Yeah. So we're going to have to do a little bit more work in and around that. And we might need to, that might mean that HR needs to do more one-on-ones with people. We can't just abandon people to working at home and yeah. think everything's going to be great mm -hmm. because that, that's not that's the case. Different. Any skill set do you think that's very crucial these days for HR professionals? Um, hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, I think the more, I think the more that HR professionals know about leadership and understanding of what is good leadership and what is bad leadership, is going to be great. Because, you know, I read a study again from Gartner. I, I like Gartner. Gartner said that um, eighty-seven percent of companies promote the wrong people into leadership. And when you've got the wrong leaders, you're now on a cycle of, you're on a roller coaster of disengagement and employee retention issues. You know, 50% of people leave bosses, not companies. And that's if you keep great. promoting bad bosses, then that's going to be uh, an issue. So I think the more you can understand leadership, the emotional intelligence, the skills that make great leaders, um, the, the higher the probability you have uh, of putting people into a good leadership. I mean, I'm a big football fan. Mm -hmm. It's the true of every sport. Yes. There are very, very few players who have played at the highest level who were the best player who go on to be the best manager. Mm. You know, Michael Jordan doesn't manage a basketball team. Greatest basketball player ever. Wayne Gretzky, greatest ice hockey player, doesn't, doesn't manage... Uh, any ice hockey teams. I mean, he's been in, he has actually done that, but you know, the skills of doing versus the skills of managing the people that do yeah. uh, are completely different. And we, and we, we just need to be cognizant of that and really understand that um, we need to find people with leadership skills, not great technical skills and try and convert them to yeah. leaders because I, I don't think, I don't think it works. And I think the, you know, 33% engagement, 67% disengagement is a testament to that. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Gordon. And again, for the audience watching, if you have any other tips, please leave it in the comments section. And tune in tomorrow for my final question with Gordon.